Well, folks, Shop Talk has come out to Smithville, Missouri this week, and we're here with Brad Dibbon, Grand National Driver at Lakeside Speedway. Uh, Brad, I guess it's pretty easy to figure out uh, how you got interested in racing. Uh, your dad raced late models for a number of years and drove uh, in the 70s and drove at a lot of tracks uh, around the area here, Lakeside, Riverside, and the old fairgrounds up at Topeka. Uh, you were probably, what, 10, 11 years old around that time? Yeah, I yeah, started. I was about 10, 11. Yeah. You have any memories that just really come out at you about going to the track with your dad? Uh, just wanting to be in the pits. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Begging him to take me down the pits with him so I, could hang out down there. Well, I was going to say, back in those days, that was a real no-no. There was no women, no kids, right? No. They, uh, they was real questionable about letting kids go down there. We, yeah. Well, we snuck in. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like so many other kids uh, in the teenage years, uh, had the need for speed, and so you uh, started racing on the drag strip. Uh, what kind of car did you run, and uh, you know how'd you do at it? Oh, we we did all right. We was just more of a hobby thing, but uh, had a couple different cars that we run. Probably the best. One, I think, was the 67 GT Fastback that we had and we yeah. played around with. So it was a lot of fun. Got down there pretty quick. Yeah. yeah <laughs> but I guess just that little distance wasn't enough speed. Had to get into a little bit more. <laughs> no, it was, you know, stand around and wait for a long time and uh, uh, 10 seconds and stand yeah. around and wait a long time. So Yeah. You know, I made it up to Topeka to the drags up there a couple of years ago for the Nationals that they have up there every year. And, and that's kind of the way I felt. I thought, man get a few seconds each time and then you're sitting down in between rounds yep uh something else that's kind of interesting you also took a shot at racing uh, sand drags and uh, you ran some out at green valley yeah yeah we did that for four years did a did a little one-seater motorcycle power buggy for two years and then i give that to my daughter uh-huh. and build a turbocharged volkswagen that we were running out there uh so it was a lot of fun but how many horsepower you think you were getting out of that, uh, that-, that vw it was it was putting out about 408 horsepower. Oh wow, that's still that's some not pretty good power. For, not bad for an 80 pound motor. <laughs> okay, during this time though that you were racing the sand drags, this is probably some of the first time in your life when you started working with chassis and uh, fabricating different things. Was this something that came naturally to you, or or did you you know have some schooling as far as fabricating stuff? Uh, most of my schooling come from wrought iron, working wrought iron shop right out of high school, and it's just one of them things. Watching dad, he built his race cars, back, yeah. you know, so I got to send back and help when I could, uh-huh. you know, and it's just been something I like to do and I'm good at. Yeah, so. I was gonna say, I guess even working with wrought iron, it still gives you that idea of where the strong points and weak points are, so yep. you know where to strengthen it up and where to take care of it. Um, you were also involved in a bike shop. Now, were you part owner, owner, or did you work there? No, I was a part owner in it. And I'm sorry. It, yeah, I was uh, part owner. It was in Clay Como Psychographics, mostly specialized in custom paint. Mm-hmm. We got into building a few uh, bikes and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and just kind of progressed. I was going to say there again, you kind of got into some chassis work, and uh, also during that time, uh, evidently must have done pretty good at it. Won some car shows or bike shows, I guess, and also had a write up in a magazine. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we won several shows, best paint, best show, uh, several, you know, first place cl- huh. in class. Um, got some recognition. Did uh, got wrote up in Chromed Out magazine, Wide Open magazine, Easy Rider. I've done a, yeah. got lucky there for a couple times. I was going to say, must have had some artistic value to it <laughs> if you got got the recognition like that. Um, in 2005, uh, your cousin Steve does start racing at Lakeside in the Grand National Class, and he ends up being the Rookie of the Year. Um, but I think it probably in the back of your mind from what you were saying, you were thinking, well, I'm, I'm doing all this work, uh, but he's getting to have all the fun. And was this kind of the first inkling of when you really wanted to get out on the track yourself? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to get out there before, and it was, uh, you know, we were already doing the drag racing thing, you know, sand drags Mm -hmm. and stuff, and 
and I was just helping out Steve. But yeah, I, I got to where I was putting in a lot more time on his circle track car than I was my sand track car. <laughs> so we decided that if we're going to put that much time and effort in, let's yeah. build our own car. So then, then that gets us up to 2006. And did did you put it together, or was it a car that you bought and went out and raced with? We uh, actually ordered a Speedway modified cage kit, um, and then we just we adapted it. You know, assembled it on a Camaro uh-huh. stub. My car was a Camaro stub, and uh, you know, basically just made a Grand National out of a modified okay. kit. You know, uh-huh. and went from there. It you know made some minor changes. You know, it was a two link setup, and we put it to four link and yeah. all that. So. Uh-huh. Okay, but uh, off I forgot to say, in 2006, though, you did win, did win, I can't talk tonight, must be the dust in my throat, uh, you did win Wook, Ricky, I can't say it's Rookie of the Year Award also in 2006 after your cousin had won it in 2005, and since then, you also have not finished any lower than sixth in the points, is that correct? That's right, yeah, we uh, we were fortunate to pull off back-to-back Rookie of the yeah. Years for the Dibbin family, and and we did you know the last two years we finished sixth place in points wasn't where we had hoped to finish both times Mm -hmm. we just had some bad luck right at the end of the season Uh two years in a row we missed the last couple races (laughs) we were just it it took us right back in points you know but uh, we managed to stay in the top 10 and that's what we were after i was gonna say that's got to hurt when you raced all year and then you get right down to the end of it and something like that I don't want to say freakish, but yeah. something like that takes you out. And speaking of the accident, uh, man, what an impact. Uh, you really had quite an accident back there on the back straightaway at Lakeside. Yeah, it was uh, it was quite a ride. It was over quick. You know, I seen the wall coming, and uh-huh. the next thing I knew, I was hanging from my harness. So, oh. <laughs> you know, uh, it was one of them deals that probably don't wish it on anybody. Uh-huh. I hope I don't have to ever experience it again. But, right. The car was built right. We built a good cage, and uh, I walked away with a couple of broken ribs. Uh, and was back racing the next week, and a car we drug out of a field that hadn't been run in a few years. <laughs> As I say, it, it was probably for 2008 the most spectacular accident that I saw in any of the the tracks that I went to. And like you say, building the car right probably helped you out quite a bit. So that brings us up to what's going on this year. Uh, you have decided to start building your own chassis of your own design. And I guess the question that I have is what in your mind, and you're going to try and sell these also, I guess I ought to throw that in there. What is going to make a racer want to buy one of your chassis? Well, hopefully they'll see me in Victory Circle a lot this year, and that'll make them want to buy them. But most likely what's going to sell my car is the quality and craftsmanship mm-hmm. of the car. I mean, I take a lot of pride in what I do. I don't, you know, I'm a perfectionist, mm-hmm. and, and every car that rolls out of this shop will will meet my high standards or it mm-hmm. won't go out. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what we're going to base it on. I'm not looking to build 20 cars a year. I'm probably going to build four, uh-huh. you know, just to kind of help with the racing. So quality and dependability are going to be what's going to sell these cars. Yep. Okay. Um, Bud, we're getting down. Bud. <clears throat> okay, Brad, we're getting down to the last minute, and I know there, you've got some people that you want to thank as far as who've helped you out as far as uh, getting you on the track each year. Yep. Yeah, I want to start by thanking uh, Shreen, uh, Shreen's Hair, etc., downtown Smithville, MBW Construction, Kansas City, Absolute Dignity, downtown Smithville, Mm -hmm. one of my corporate sponsors in breast cancer awareness Mm -hmm. she supports. So um, Nails by Misty, KC Performance, which is my engine builder that come on board this year, Um, Cart Mart, and Aflac. I got to thank my dad and my brother for all their support and and commitment to the team. Mm -hmm. Of course, my wife and all my fans Mm -hmm. and racing family. I was going to say, as much as we want to think about it and we've talked I don't, several times to different drivers it it's not just the guy out there driving the car it's it's a team effort and it takes all of those people to uh, really make uh, racing possible for a lot of drivers especially on the level that we're talking about here in Kansas City well folks I think we're going to have to wrap it up for shop talk here with Brad Dibbon 
in Smithville, Missouri. It should be an open class this year as far as that Grand National class. So, Brad, we're looking forward to seeing you in the Winter Circle. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's going to do it.